Hi, this is Mark with QuixVenture.com. In this video, we're going to continue our Linux installation on a Raspberry Pi by using the Raspbian Debian Wheezy image from RaspberryPi.org. In the previous video, we downloaded the image itself and we created the SD card. Now I have that SD card and I'm going to put it into my Raspberry Pi. On the back of the Raspberry Pi, you just slide the SD card in. Make sure that you have a video connection, some kind, <clears throat> preferably HDMI to DVI or just HDMI into a TV. I'm plugged into a USB hub and the network as well. All you need to do to power it on is take your micro USB power adapter and plug it into the power input. When you do that, the red light on the Raspberry Pi will light up and you'll start to see text scrolling across the screen. This is a pretty standard Linux startup, but you can see the little Raspberry Pi logo in the top left-hand corner. A couple of extra things happen on the very first boot, the most important of which is at the end of the boot, instead of going to a desktop or regular command prompt, it's going to go to a special Raspberry Pi configuration screen. And some of those settings can be a little bit confusing, so I'll walk through what they do. <clears throat> The Raspberry Pi itself doesn't actually have a uh, hardware clock, it has a virtual clock, so it is going to the network to get all of its time settings. Okay, it may be a little bit tough to see, so I'm going to try and push in as tight as I can get here. But you have a few options on the screen. It's the Raspi Config application, and the first option is Info, and it's information about the tool. You can probably skip that. The second option is expand root FS. So basically the image itself is about two gigs and I have an eight gig card. So I'm going to select this option to have the Raspbian image repartition the card so that it uses the full size of the card. And that'll happen at the next boot. The overscan option is useful if you're using the composite video out. That is the yellow analog video out to an old TV. But since I have an HDMI connection, I have a digital connection and therefore don't need to worry about overscan. Configure the keyboard layout. This is important because the keyboard is set up by default to be Great Britain. It's taken a minute to uh, recognize my selection there. Okay. So I have a generic 101 key PC keyboard. The default for the Raspberry Pi is the 105 International PC. And that may cause some problems because it's set up for some extra keys that my keyboard doesn't have. And it means I can't type things like a tilde or a quote without figuring out which key it's actually mapped to. So I'm gonna select generic 101 key PC and hit enter. The default is English UK, but since my keyboard is English US, I'm gonna to have to select other. Select English US, and again, I have the generic English US. And I want the default keyboard layout. There are some other options for menu keys and uh, logo keys and things like that. I'm not going to enable a compose key. However, by default, I am going to enable control alt backspace to exit the X server. That's if you're running a desktop environment like LXDE, so I'm selecting yes here, but that's up to you. It'll take uh, just a couple of minutes to actually run the process to set up that key map. Now this is your first time working with a Raspberry Pi, you'll notice that a lot of things run a little bit slower on a Raspberry Pi than they would on any other computer. We're right back to the Raspi config so we've done the keyboard and now you can set a password for the Pi user. Your default password, or rather your default login is Pi, P-I, and default password is Raspberry. If you'd like to change it, you can use this option to do so. It's going to ask you to enter the password for the Pi user. So I'm just going to add a new password and it will ask me to confirm it. So I have now changed the password for the Pi user. Setting the locale. This is important because it sets the basic language to be used by applications. This is a little bit of a slow process on the Raspberry Pi, but it is a little bit important and it's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to walk through the whole thing. 
the first thing you're presented with is a whole bunch of locales. And they are a two-digit code, underscore, an uppercase two-digit code, and then something like ISO or UTF-8. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're not really uh, used to working with this. Since I am an English speaker and in the U.S., I am going to say I need the EN underscore US locale. And in general, it's best to select UTF-8 locales. So I'm going to have to scroll down here a ways to find the ENUS. Right now it's set up for ENGB, for English in Great Britain. I'm going to remove that by hitting the space bar and continue on down until I find ENUS and the UTF-8 option. Hit space bar and then hit enter. So that has selected the ENUS UTF-8 locale. It's asking you which you'd like to be the default in a multi-user environment. The default is none right now, but I'm going to select the ENUS UTF-8 by hitting the down arrow and the enter key. At this point, the Raspberry Pi is going out and grabbing those locale information, uh, or rather configuration files, and is loading them into the system. And this takes, uh, it takes a little bit of time. But by doing so, with any luck, the text on the screen is going to make a bit more sense and be in your native language, and your keyboard is going to be mapped correctly. The next option is to set time zone. Again, this is all set up for Great Britain. So I need to select US, and I'm in the Eastern time zone. Set whatever is appropriate for your particular time zone. The memory split option is deciding how you want to split between video memory and system memory. The current is 192 megs for the system and 60 more, 64 megs for the video. A lot of, uh, a lot of video intensive applications are going to prefer to be the 128, 128 or 192, 64 depending on the applications that you're going to run. I'm going to leave it at the default which is 192 for ARM and 64 for video. Select it and hit enter. SSH. This is going to enable the SSH server, and I believe it's enabled by default, but I just like to enable it anyway, because SSH is probably how you're going to interface with your Raspberry Pi most often. You'll use a tool like PuTTY or any other secure shell terminal emulator. Just click enable, and it shows you that it's enabled. Next there is the boot behavior. You can select to have the Raspberry Pi either boot you straight into a desktop, which is LXDE on the Raspberry Pi, and it's a pretty nice little desktop. Or you can have it boot directly into a command prompt. I'm partial to the LXDE desktop, so I'm going to leave the default yes. Finally, there is an update option, and I believe this just runs an apt-get update. So it takes a few minutes, but it makes sure that all of your repositories are up to date. So it's a good idea to run that before you start installing any software. I will probably also run a manual apt-get update and aptitude update after the fact, just to be on the safe side. So this takes, again, a couple of minutes on the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's relatively slow going out and grabbing the uh, repository information. And I believe that the configuration tool is going to ask me to reboot after this run. So unfortunately, it's going to come right back up again on the second boot. But we'll walk through that process and we'll get all the way to a desktop. So it's reading the various packages and it's parsing out all the information about what packages are available. This is pretty standard Linux stuff. If there's one thing that this video should show you about the Raspberry Pi, it's that you're going to do a lot of waiting for it to finish things that would normally take very little time on a more powerful machine. There just isn't a whole lot of horsepower in that 700 megahertz system on a chip. Now, that being said, it's a surprisingly capable machine. 
Okay, so now we have uh, dropped down to the uh, command prompt. I'm going to reboot, and then I'm going to finish the configuration. To reboot, you type in sudo reboot, S-U-D-O-R-E-B-O-O-T. And there's a space between sudo and reboot. Go through a pretty standard Linux shutdown. And every time you start your Raspberry Pi, you'll get that iridescent rainbow picture in the center. So this is what a normal boot will look like, except that I believe one more time it's going to load up the Raspi config application. Since we've already done everything, we're going to go back to the bottom of that and hit finish, and then it will not run that anymore. In fact, it will boot right to LXDE. So we're going to reboot one more time after this, show you the LXDE desktop, and then we're going to create another video of walking through the options when you're inside of LXDE. And that is the lightweight X desktop environment. It's pretty cool. You can run it on a Crystal Buntu Apple TV One. You can run it on some low-powered machines. It is a very trimmed-down desktop environment. It looks a little bit like you know, Windows 95. It doesn't have a lot of animations. It doesn't have a lot of uh, rounded edges and things. But it gets the job done, and the fact that you can have a desktop on something like a Raspberry Pi is impressive in and of itself. In fact, right now we are doing the uh, online resize of the partition because we had uh, selected that option in the previous uh, configuration. So this is going to take just a couple of minutes. In retrospect, I wish we hadn't done that and restarted. But what can you do? This is what it's really going to be like, and it takes uh, it takes a few minutes to finish this uh, resize. In fact, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to stop this video because this could take a few minutes and it'll be very boring. What's going to happen is that when this finishes, it will load back up the blue Raspi config option. You've already, you've already configured everything at this point, so go all the way to the bottom and select Finish. That will dump you back to a command prompt, and you can either type Start X, S-T-A-R-T-X, and that will start the LXDE desktop, or you can just do a reboot, and then it will boot directly into LXDE on your next boot. So, Come back to quicksventure.com to see the next video in our series on the Raspberry Pi and the Raspbian installation. Thanks for watching.